before that, just an announcement. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, though it's quite uh, a very informal request, if anyone of you all want lunch to be, you know, to have, if you want to have it here in Kalakshetra dining hall, please, we can give your names outside so that so many coupon, coupons will be given to you for lunch. Thank you. Well, welcome everybody. And I begin the second day of the discourse. We start with the Mangala Charan. And this Mangala Charan, I'll also, after doing it, explain the meaning to you. It is what Abhinav Gupta has written in the very first beginning of his Abhinav Bharati. Yastan mayad hridaya samvadana kramena Drag chitta shakti gana bhoomi vibhaga bhagi Harashola sat paravikar jushahakaroti Vande tamam tamahamindu kalavatam sam. Vande tamam tam aham indu kalavatam sam. Indu kalavatam one who has the, the chandrama on his forehead or in his hair, I worship Shiva of this kind, of this character. And what else is he? Yaha tanmayad hridaya samvadana kramena. What does he do by arousing your emotions? Hridaya Samvadan, bringing a change of heart through all the emotional bhavas in Natya. Hridaya Samvadana Kramena. And how does he do it? Through male and female characters in the Natya, in a performance. Drak, Chitra, Shakti, Gana, Bhumi, Vibhag, Bhagi. So he makes this allocation like the great Sutradhar, who is going to perform whom? Men and women, these characters. And through this, Yastan Mayad Hridaya Sam Vadanakramena Drak Chitra Shakti Gana Bhumi Vibhaga Bhagi Harashol Lasat Paravikara Jushah Karoti. And what does he do? He brings us to a stage which is paravikara jushaha, which is beyond any kind of corruption, any kind of distortion, any vikaras, thoughts, ideas. So he takes us to the highest state of understanding. Such vande tamam tamahamindu kalavatamsa. So Abhinav Gupta starts his Abhinav Bharati with this verse. And as in the tradition, the great tradition of Vyakhyakaras, the first Vandana, the prayer that he does, reflects upon the nature of the task that he has undertaken. He has undertaken the task of doing a Vyakya of Natya Shastra. So it is regarding Natya that the uh, whole Vandana is describing something. All right. Now I thought that I should try and give you today the Natya Shastra in a nutshell. And before you get to read the whole of Natya Shastra or understand the whole of it, 
if you just take down the verse which i am going to give you then you will see all the all the elements of natyashas so this one shloka is the rasa or the samam bonam of whole natyashas and what is this verse rasabhavahi abhinayaha dharmi vritti pravrittayah rasa bhava hi abhinayah dharmi vritti pravrittayah ah rasa bhava hi abhinayah dharmi vritti pravrittayah सिद्धि स्वरा तथा आतोद्यम तथा नेक्स्ट वर्ड आतोद्यम गानम सिद्धि स्वरा तथा तोद्यम गानम रंगश्च संग्रह सो गानम रंग च संग्रह सो दिस इज अ संग्रह नाट्य इज अ संग्रह ऑफ पुटिंग टुगेदर ऑफ वेरियस थिंग्स एंड व्हाट आर दीज थिंग्स रस भाव अभिनय धर्मी वृत्ति प्रवृत्ति सिद्धि स्वर आतोद्य एंड गान एंड रंग ओके नाउ आई होप यू नो द मीनिंग ऑफ ईच ऑफ देम लेट मी जस्ट ब्रीफली टेल यू व्हाट ईच मीन्स रस विल टॉक अबाउट इट भाव अभिनय रसा भावा ही अभिनय धर्मी ना सम ऑफ यू मे नॉट बी दैट फेमिलियर विद द आइडिया ऑफ धर्मी सो देर आर टू काइंड ऑफ धर्मी नाट्य धर्मी एंड लोक धर्मी एंड वील टॉक अबाउट दिस इन डिटेल बिकॉज देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ कन्फ्यूजन अबाउट लोक धर्मी एंड नाट्य धर्मी सो रसा भावा ही अभिनय धर्मी वृत्ति प्रवृत्तय सिद्धि yesterday i mentioned that there is two kinds of siddhi then swara and we'll spend a lot of time when we do the 17th chapter on swara because whatever is produced by the vocal cord whether singing or speaking or half speaking half singing is all part of swara atodya means some kind of a musical instrument oh, well why some kind it means musical instrument and this is a peculiar word it is not any longer used but what it means is that that which is hit and which makes a sound of course anything in the world if hit makes a sound but here in this context it means that it makes a very pleasant musical sound so आतोद्य गान सिद्धि स्वरा तथा आतोद्यम गानम नाउ हियर इट डज नॉट मीन साम गान इन दिस वर्स इट मीन्स ध्रुवा गान सो दिस इज ध्रुवा नॉट साम गान और सिंगिंग बिकॉज वेन दे हैव use the word swar then in swar they have included all kinds of speech as well as singing so but they have not used dhruva included dhruva because dhruva is a very unusual thing which is used in theater or was used in classical indian theater so 
Ganam and Rang means the theater house. We talked about it yesterday. So this one verse is actually the whole of the constituent of the Natya Shastra. So if somebody were to ask you, what is Natya? What does Natya or theater consist of? Indian theater or the Indian concept of theater consists of, then this is how it is defined in the Indian tradition. If somebody were to ask a question today in the university, what are the elements of drama, then people will say dialogue, people will say character, they'll say story, they'll say some kind of, perhaps they won't say music. Now this is a classification which actually comes from the Greek text called Poetics written by Aristotle. Peripetiki written by Aristotle and he gave the six elements of tragedy. These six elements of tragedy were taken up by Europe from Renaissance period onwards and a new kind of a theater was created. Uh, the ancient Greek theater died out very early because when Christianity came to Greece, the Christian fathers were against theater. They were puritanical, they had philosophic reasons for not allowing theater. And the primary reason was, and this is important for you to know, because this is how uh, the great attack on Greek theater took place and this was the reason why the tradition of Greek theater died out in Greece. Uh, the Christian doctrine was that God has given us an image. God has given us a face. God has given us a body. And man is created in the image of God. That's the Christian doctrine. That God created man in his own image. So Adam was created in the image of God. In other words, he is a pratirup or a mimesis or an imitation of God. Some of you may have seen that very famous painting by Michelangelo where God half lying in the air is pointing a finger and Adam on the lower part of the painting also half lying is touching God's finger. God is an old man with lots of hair, flowing hair, and Adam is a young body. Uh, so that is a Renaissance imagination of how God was created, uh, how, sorry, man was created by God in his own image. So the Christian father said that God created every human being in his image and uh, if you change that image then you are practicing devilry that's the job of the devil it is satan who takes up many shapes he becomes this he becomes that you know so people in theater when they take up another character when they take up another uh, persona, personality, then they do what the devil does and hence theater is devilish. So this was their argument. Now whether it is good or bad or right or wrong, that's a different issue. Each of us has to look into it and take our decision. But for this reason, they closed down the theater. And the same thing happened in uh, 
uh, in around 1620 in England and parts of Europe, when the Puritans came in, the Puritans said that bring down the theatres, close them, because they didn't like uh, what was a happy, pleasant, enjoyable form of art. So they always felt threatened by it. This was the reason why Greek theater died out and in Europe there was hardly any theater worth its name till the Renaissance period when the ancient Greek learning was revived. And when they revived ancient Greek theater, they started reading the text because they did not have any living tradition. They had no living tradition of theater, either inherited from some other culture or from European culture. So they went to the text of Aristotle and there Aristotle had shown six elements of tragedy. <coughs> These six elements of tragedy were taken by them and a new drama was created in Renaissance time and great uh, playwrights started writing and plays were being performed. So the theory which they adopted was the theory of Europe, uh, sorry, ancient Greece. And in this, these six elements were then made as the theory of Western drama. And when Western education in the British period, 19th century, mid 19th century, came to India, and new universities and schools and colleges were open, and they started teaching us drama. Then they brought in their own Shastra, which was not even their own Shastra. European Shastras are actually Greek and Roman Shastras. And it is a tragedy that we, the Indian people, who have dozens of Shastras of our own, do not study them at all now because from 18, uh, 1832 onwards when the new system was introduced by the British, by Macaulay, there was a total exclusion of all the Indian Shastras. And this is also the time when slowly and slowly they started talking in very derogatory terms about the Sanskrit language. And they said this language is only the language of orthodoxy. It is only the language of backwardness. And this is the time when they said, oh, this dancing in temples, this is horrible. You see, the story was repeated. What was done to Greece in 2nd, 3rd century, 4th century AD after the establishment of the official new religion of Christianity was done to the Hindu temples of India. Look, we have to examine this thing very dispassionately as a historical development and see what was actually going on. So under the guise of liberating those women, Devadasis, they made a law and they said there will be no dancing in the temples. If you carefully read the law which was later on made, prohibiting dance in temples, it was not a law which just said the Devadasis shall not dance. It said there shall be no dancing in the temples. So this was a Puritanism that came in. And then in India, people had to make a big effort to say that dance in our tradition is a sacred art. As we read from the Natya Shastra yesterday, that it is 
Lokanu Kirtanam, that it is a great art, that it is not something to be looked down upon. And then there was the great revival of Indian dance and the old dance form called Sadar, Sadar Nach, what was just called Sadar Nach in the uh, chords of uh, the Tanjore chords and the Nayak chords was called, renamed as Bharatanatyam. Right? You all know that Bharatanatyam is not an ancient word, nor is Bharatnrityam. <laughs> You understand what I am indicating? Yeah. We'll talk about Bharat Nityam later on. So these are new names. Uh, not that these names are wrong or irrelevant, but we have to understand why they came into existence, how they came into existence. Because there is a historical development and a great effort to save the art. But the attack on the art was conducted as a result of certain ideology. And we have to examine those ideologies which constantly threaten creativity. You understand what I mean? Uh, learning Bharatanatyam, performing Bharatanatyam or any other art form is basically a commitment to the freedom of creativity. Creativity of expression, of communication, of bringing forth your ideas and so forth. So, the point that I made was the most important thing with which I started that in the tradition of Natya and the Natya Shastra, the elements Rasa, Bhava, Abhinaya, Vritti, Pravritti, Siddhi, Swara, Atodya, Ganam, Ranga. Uh, did I leave one? Yeah. Now these are the essential ones. They have not taken dialogue. Here the classification is different because dialogue comes as part of swar. They have not taken plot. The, the word plot or story comes from the Greek word mythos. Mythos means myth, the word myth in English. Actually myth in Greek means story. But because all these stories were about the gods, pagan gods, so it became a derogatory word later on in the European languages. And today myth means something which is not true in the English language. So the story is again part of the action which is going to happen. Through Rasabhava, Abhinay, etc. 